Oi, hi, hello there. I'm Andy. I'm a self-taught software developer and today's video is all about, uh, what is it about? It's about JavaScript Tetris. So I taught myself how to code in the summer of 2014 and one of the first things I did after uh, reading through the headfirst JavaScript book is I learned, or I taught myself, or I guess I, I built a JavaScript Tetris app as my first sort of application that I was gonna put in my portfolio. And I'll actually throw up a picture here. So this is a whiteboard picture of, I don't know, like it's basically I drew out all the little pieces to the game. Those are called Tetraminos. And I tried to figure out how to detect whether these pieces were touching each other. I don't remember much, honestly. I just threw a whiteboard together and uh, I, I've looked at that for like five minutes. I still really don't remember what I was thinking. But long story short is it worked. I have a uh, full-fledged uh, Tetris app. I guess it depends on how you define full-fledged, but I have a, a Tetris app that I built and I'm gonna go over that with you. Now, this video is definitely recommended for beginners. Uh, if you're an intermediate or advanced JavaScript developer, you're gonna be like, this is really not the greatest code. And it's true, it's not. It's the first thing I ever wrote. So uh, we're just gonna go over it and get, maybe uh, give any of those beginners out there a sense of how to go about building a game. And at the end, I'll try to give you a takeaway of sort of what is a, what you should be thinking about if you're going to build your first app that you want to challenge your skills. Because there is sort of a, a strategy and I'll share that with you at the end. So anyways, I got my screen sharing software. Let's go check out what this JavaScript Tetris app looks like, okay? So uh, I'm not sure why I needed to do all that. So first things first, the link to my GitHub repository is in the description below, but I'm gonna make it easy for you. All right, bah, boom, right there, right on the right hand side of the screen. You're gonna click, you're gonna left click clone or download, which will, believe it or not, download that to your file system. It's gonna come in a zip, so just go ahead and unzip that. And you will have all the files that you will need to run this application. Now, keep in mind, if you wanna go ahead and just start playing off the bat, you're sick of hearing me talk, you wanna play some Tetris, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna open up that index.html file, but I do not want you to open that file in any browser but Firefox. Reason is, is because I wrote this app like four years ago and some of the browsers have changed how they allow images to be placed on an HTML canvas. Long story short, all you need to know is that if you wanna play right now this instant, you gotta open it in Firefox. Anything else, sadly, it won't work. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Oh yeah, there we go. Some nice Tetris action right there, huh? Look at that. So yeah, it's a Tetris game, and it, you know what? It's pretty cool, it works. And I'll show you how. Oh, that's bad, I'm really bad at this game, wow. Oh my god, it's gonna take forever. Oh, what do you know? Look at that, I scored. Actually, I don't think I was supposed to score there. <laughs> my scoring system may be off. But hey, look, it kind of works. Uh, I just scored 100 points. I just scored 200 points now because it's clearing out. So you can see it definitely it definitely works. Now, uh, there are a few bugs in this bad boy, in this this program here. I'll try to show you what it looks like. Uh, I guess not. Little known secret, you can get Tetramino stuck like that. But uh, long story short, that's my app. That's the whole thing. So I'm assuming that you're a beginner and you just kind of want to get a sense of how this thing works. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So these three files and a directory of images is all you're really going to need to have a Tetris app. It's really not that complicated. You've got an index.html file, which is going to open up in your browser. And that's basically going to tell the web page what it's going to look like. We have a CSS page, which is, you know, just basically used for styling. In this case, there's not much styling going on and then your JavaScript page. And everything in the JavaScript page is basically the, the engine that runs the app. It's gonna control how scoring is done. It's gonna even really control how the, the, the game is played. It's gonna control how the, 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 uh, the game screen looks. Uh, obviously, we'll get more into that in a second here. But the other thing you might wanna know is that in the images file, I'm sorry, in the images directory, you have all of the game pieces. Now these game pieces are a highly technical term that I'm gonna share with you. They're called tetraminos, okay, remember that. So these tetraminos here, you can see that there's a picture of each one, but not only that, they're in each possible position that they could possibly be in, in the game. And yeah, I probably don't really need to know that, but maybe in a future video, it might make a little more sense and I'll try to cover that. But 
So let's look at the index.html page first. Now, there's not really much you have to look at here. I would say just focus on two things. We'll focus on the, in the body of the page here, there's an on key down event and it's calling a JavaScript function called store key and it's taking an event as an argument. This is going to uh, track any key presses on the page, but we'll get into that in a sec. Now, the other thing I would say to uh, take a look at is the game screen uh, div right here. <clears throat> and that's basically going to contain the, you know, did you guess it? Yeah, that's right. It's going to contain the game screen, which really is just a HTML canvas. And if you don't know what HTML canvas, basically what that is, is it's a sort of screen that you create that you can manipulate or draw onto, I guess is probably a better uh, way of putting it through JavaScript. So as you guessed it, that's gonna be our game screen and we're gonna use JavaScript to write onto that to make it look like there's a Tetris game going on. So, make sense so far? Good, good, all right, awesome, I'm wonderful. All right, so now we're looking at the uh, JavaScript that is going to run our program here. Now there's a lot of stuff going on. It's a little bit confusing, even to me when I first looked at it, it's been a couple, it's been at least what, one or two years since I probably looked at this, but when I first look at it, the thing I think about is that there's a lot of stuff going on and you don't need to really pick it up very quickly. It's not well written. It's my first app I ever wrote. It could be more modularized to make it easier to pick up quickly. I'm really big into clean code and what that basically means is that I want people to be able to look at my code and very quickly pick up uh, what is going on both by how it's organized and how it's named uh, and yada yada. But in this case, it's not named very well. There's abbreviations for variables. It's not very important. The important thing is, is a few things. One is, uh, up here in the very top, you're going to see all this stuff. This is basically the configuration and setup of the game. FPS stands for frames per second, which you'll see how that's used. And then ITER stands for iteration. And what iteration means is basically what iteration of the game are we on. So uh, every Tetramino that's going to be played, so every, you know, like a new Tetramino pops down uh, after you've put one at the bottom. Well, that's an iteration. So for every new Tetramino piece that you're going to get, it's going to be another iteration that's really all you need to see from this. It's a lot of information, but we're gonna just do a high level view of all this stuff. If you really wanna see where the magic happens, you're gonna go to line 178. And on line 178, there's a variable called game start, and it's calling the set interval function, which is a native JavaScript function that takes two arguments. The first one is what function that you want to run. And the second uh, argument is uh, how often you wanna run that function. So it's basically a, a native JavaScript function that will run anything you want it to uh, for as long as you want it to until you tell it to stop, but it will run it at a certain interval of time. So it'll run it you know, every one second or 10 seconds or 15 seconds until you tell it to stop. Now this is really important for me because this is a way for me to basically have the game run, right? So I can, I can call a function every single time. And in this case, you can see here, it's called, it's calling update game state. So really everything here is going to happen in line 178 and that's gonna call the main function of the app. Now, the reason I stored that into a variable, just so that you know, just so that it's not sort of a mystery, I eventually was gonna call, uh, I was going to stop the set interval function because I didn't want that to run forever, but I actually never did in this app. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Now, the update game state is gonna do some very simple stuff and then something very complicated. All it's really gonna do is draw a canvas, okay? So you're gonna draw a, a basically picture of the canvas. In this case, in this very first iteration, it'll just be a black canvas. It will then copy that canvas into memory. So it'll say, I wanna take a you know, sort of state, I wanna know the state of that canvas, I'm gonna save it in the memory and into a variable. And then the tetro, tetro.position, tetro, whenever you see that variable, basically that means the current tetro, okay? So the current tetramino that's on the page, the current tetramino for this iteration. We're gonna take that, um, Tetramino's Y position on the page, because there's an X and Y position, and Y is up and down, by the way, it's gonna add 12 to that Y position. So anytime you add 12, think about if zero is the top, you're gonna add 12 sort of pixels, and it's gonna move down a little bit. Move X is going to detect whether any keys were pressed, and it's gonna move it left or right accordingly, or it's gonna rotate it, or drop it down all the way to the bottom. The Draw Tetro is actually going to draw the Tetramino on the page. So the Tetramino is not on there until we draw it. So it's gonna draw it based on those, those positions. And then of course, the detect collision is the most complicated part of the app. It is going to try to detect whether the current Tetramino is touching any other pieces, whether it's touching any bounds uh, left or right. 
And I'm not going to get into that in this video, maybe in a future video, but it's just a little too complicated and my code's a little bit too spaghetti to actually try to break it down. But keep in mind that's what it's doing. All right, so now we're going to be looking at the app. We're going to walk through it line by line as the JavaScript is running. So as you can see on my screen here, I've got the app open and it's sort of paused, it's in a pause state. And I was able to do that by opening up the developer tools. If you press F12, you're gonna be able to open up the developer tools on in Firefox. And by going over to the debugger tag and opening the JS underscore Tetris JavaScript page, we're gonna actually be able to put a breakpoint on any line of code that we want. And when that line of code is hit, it will freeze. And then we can actually step over each line. Just to get, I'm just gonna show you sort of a visual of what's going on. All right, so let's actually step through this. So the Tetramino is about to hit another one. It's about one, uh, I guess you would call, it's about one interval away from touching the next Tetramino. So let's actually see this in action, shall we? So I'm gonna go ahead and, so I'm gonna go ahead and step over the draw canvas. Now, the one thing you'll notice is that when I draw the canvas, the Tetramino disappears. Now, the reason this is, the reason that I did this like that is because I wanted it to look like there was motion. And I noticed that if I didn't sort of overwrite the Tetramino with a bl blank screen and then update it, it looked very weird. It almost looked like it was dragging sort of, um, how would you say it? The motion looked very weird. So I actually, so I actually blanked out the Tetramino. Then I took a copy of the canvas of this current state that you can see here. I'm gonna copy over it. It's just stored in memory so you can't see anything going on. Then we're going to update the Tetramino, the current Tetramino's Y position. So we're going to move it 12 pixels down. We're going to detect any keystrokes. We're going to step over that. And now the most important part is we're actually going to draw the Tetramino based on the new position, either X or Y position, and we're going to, we're going to draw that. So, oh, look, there you go. Now this is where the juice or the meat of the application occurs. This is where the most complicated stuff occurs. It's going to call Detect Collision, which is going to do a bunch of checks to see, is it touching anything? And in this case, we can see that the bottom part of this Tetramino, which is I think called the, call it the L, I guess that'd be the J, I don't really know. This Tetramino is touching another one, so it will actually do its job and start a new Tetramino, which should happen here. There you go. So that's basically it. Now, the biggest takeaway is, okay, you got a canvas, you're drawing, you're using images to draw. It's a little more complicated than that, but, and you can, I honestly highly recommend you scale over the code and try to figure out just a little bit, maybe more than what's going on. But this is the, the this is the core of the app. And the, the reason this is so important and the thing that I sort of hinted at when I started was anytime that you want to do something, that, anytime that you want to create an application that's a little bit more complicated than you feel comfortable with, you just need to start with sort of a, you just really need to start with an idea of what you want to do first. You want to start with a big picture, obviously, right? You want to say you want to build a JavaScript Tetris app, but you don't know where to start. Well, keep the big picture in mind that that's what you want, but then small chunk it into little steps. Say you know what, I'm gonna use a screen background that I'm gonna draw onto. I'm going to draw the Tetramino on there. I'm going to detect you know, any X or Y position changes. And then I'm gonna draw that Tetramino on there. And then I'm going to see if it's touching anything. And then if it's not, I restart the loop. Like the way that I built this app is I just took it one step at a time. Literally the first thing I did, and it took me so long, which is really funny to think about because the information is easily and readily available, is just to draw a Tetramino on the page and then draw it a little bit lower, and then draw it a little bit lower, and then draw it a little bit lower, and then draw it a little bit lower. And then once I could do that, then all of a sudden I had to figure out how do I then stop it at the bottom? How do I detect whether the bottom of the Tetramino has touched the bottom of the page? And not to mention the fact that there's four or five different Tetraminos. Is there four? I don't know. There's four or five different Tetraminos. They all have different shapes and sizes. It's like, I just took it one step at a time. I didn't worry about all of it at once. I just figured out how can I get draw a Tetramino on the page and then how can I move it? Once you do that, then you can start to think about bigger stuff, but don't try to jump ahead and think like, oh man, I got to build this full fledged app that has scoring and I don't even know where to start. Like, yo, just, Start at the beginning. How can you draw a, a image on a canvas? And if you start with there, then you, you take it a little bit by little bit. So, okay, I don't know. I feel like I'm just going on and on. Uh, I'm really not too great at these tutorials where I'm showing code, but what did you think? Did you like the video? Uh, how, what do you think of my Tetris app? Is it really good? Did you like it? Did you play it? Did you master it? Uh, I think the highest score I ever got was 700. So if you beat it, please let me know. Uh, other than that, thanks so much for watching. Go ahead and subscribe below and click the bell if you enjoyed the video. I put out lots of video on software development and 
other topics, I guess. But uh, I don't know. Thank you so much for watching and peace out.